an all new logo for the whole Peugeot brand for the first time used with the all new Peugeot 308, the third generation of the compact estate or compact hatch. We have both here for you in Auto Gefühl with Thomas here today. We have a complete overview, exterior, interior and driving with the SW. Also a look here at the 308 hatch. And this episode will be even more interesting here because we will have the predecessor version, the second generation in the driving part. So we can really compare it to the new generation both as plug-in hybrid and as petrol. And we'll also have a comparison to the Seat Leon in driving. This is also one of the main competitors and also represents the VW Golf and the Škoda Octavia because they share the same platform. So, so many interesting things to come up and also with trim comparison and so on. And we directly start here in the front with the SW. First time we see it in the front. Actually here, this interesting new grille, small dots on the inside and they get wider to the outside. So this really centers everything on the all new logo right here. Very interesting blue greenish mixed color. The favorite color for me would of course be vertigo blue. We know that already from the predecessor. This is the typical Thomas Blue and Auto Gefühl. Yeah, so that's the first time here for the estate. How does the hatch look like and are there any differences? In the front hatch and estate are not too different actually. This new front grille, this logo in a similar shape was already available in 1960s, but they had a little bit differently from the color design and the hair of the lion was a little bit different in the shape. So yeah, so the lion got a fresh haircut. Um, yeah, or was groomed <laughs> freshly and therefore it's also a little bit different. So retro style, but modern at the very same time. Well, lions need to be petted and groomed regularly, especially when they are placed at new logos, right? So guys, what do you think about the new Peugeot logo? The 308 is the first car to bear that one. Of course, the following cars will do as well. Tell me your comments right now. I think it's good or bad. We're looking forward to it. The daytime running light, really spectacular here in this vertical shape. And headlamps come standard with LED, optional. You can also see them right here, the matrix LED with an elaborated high beam function. And when the turning indicators are activated in a spectacular way, they replace the daytime running light, this vertical style. Wow, that looks really fancy. And these are the turning indicators here in the rear. 4 meters 37 or 172 inches is the length here of the 308 hatch. It's a little bit grown in length and also grown in wheelbase. This will have an effect on the rear seating. Wheels come from 16 to 18 inch. These ones here are the biggest 18 inch wheels and both in the side profile and in the rear, unlike in the front, the hatch and the estate are really different. Here, the hatch has the typical C shape here at the back window. Mm, this could be painted a little bit better. I think here just the high gloss you just have at the lower end. So this is a crucial difference. And the really spectacular rear we can see right there. They worked on the structural rigidity of the chassis, by the way. We will soon see that while driving. And here, these new tail lamps, very modern, beautiful structure. And the hatch has this black part that goes all the way across the vehicle, connects the two tail lamps. It will be different in the estate showing you very soon. And especially if you look from here to the side, actually, that's a very interesting shape they have here. So actually a sculptural work, however. Out of full fake exhaust police alert, because this one here, pure fake exhaust graphic. Yeah. And four meters 64 or 183 inches for the estate model, the SW or SW, as the French would say. So 27 centimeters or 11 inches longer than the hatch version. And I think really interesting, they do differ quite a lot. Not so much in the front. We also have the 18 inch wheels here and also the new Peugeot logo at the side profile right there. Then this one here has roof rails. And you can see here in this area, this is really different. So whereas the hatch more had the C shape, here we have a more dynamic shape for the station wagon. That's really interesting. And the really sharp design lines right here. And the differences will be even more interesting in the rear. But what do you think here about the design for the 308? Would you go for the hatch or here for the estate? Tell me in the comments. Come closer for the rear of the estate. Wow, look at that. I mean, this integrated rear wing, it's almost like a ducktail of a sports car or something. AJ just told me that, hey, doesn't it look like a Ferrari 812 or something like this? AJ will join me later also for the driving part. <laughs> yeah, I think you can really argue about that, but I think this integration of the wing is very well done. And this is totally different here with the estate to compare to the hatch. The lamps here, however, tail lamps are actually the same. Then we have in the GT version or GT pack, this contrasting lower part here. So overall, I think design-wise, especially with the estate, I think they really nailed it. 
or what's your take here? And now coming to the interior part, let's take a short comparison look. First here, the outgoing model, the 308 second generation, and one of the main competitors, the Seat Leon here as FR trim. And finally, the all new Peugeot 308, where we can see a clearly more sophisticated interior design comparing to the predecessor and also better build quality. The key fob form itself is not really known, but it also features the new logo right here. And you know, famous auto through test here, door closing sound. Hmm, that's really solid. Sounds very nice. As for seats, today we have first of all the Allure seat with fabric and leatherette. Then basically the same form goes with the GT, but the GT has microfiber accentuations together with some fabric and the Let's say plain GT seat here is normal finished in the front like this with microfiber, no lengthenment. Whereas in the GT pack, so that's an even higher trim, here the basic same seats, but then the front part you have this additional element and by this you can make the front part even a little bit longer or then push it in again. And that is really good, especially if you're taller. By the way, also this one, really soft. But it's all leather red, so no animal material used for the seats. And indeed, the GT Pack seats to me bring most comfort, even though they are all somewhat same in the form Allure, GT, and GT Pack, due to this additional element and also the nice microfiber surface. To, to me, it just brings most comfort, especially for taller drivers. So, I really feel, um, you know, very good right here. Steering wheel up and down, in and out. This, yeah, doesn't feel too good. However, all prototype vehicles here are very early stage vehicles today, so we hope that this can be still fixed. But definitely very good seating position. The question is, what about the rest of the interior? Of course, really unique, this i-cockpit. Interior overview here with this steering wheel, we know a little bit, some kind of a, from the 508. Really cool gaming alike. New assistance systems also with semi-autonomous level two functions that will be coming up. GT badge right here because it's a sporty version. Then the digital instruments, they come in 10 inch, either two dimensional or three dimensional. Hard to pick it up on camera, but it's kind of like two layers, really interesting. And you can also switch some of the views on the inside. On the right side here, also 10 inch infotainment system, you know, El Capo integration or Android Auto, also wirelessly. And then these are five hotkeys here. Well, one, two, three, four, five, and then another home button. And this is optional coming beginning from the Allure trim level and here also in the GT trim level. And this is actually a very interesting idea. They are really large, so you can press these and then you directly hop to that. And there's still this old trick with a three finger system when you are inside the um, you know Peugeot uh, system here. When you're somewhere around three fingers, we'll always go back to the main menu. And then there are also some hard keys here in the lower end, for example, to access the climate menu. This is always the case and these then here are optional. The only thing is that they collect a lot of fingerprints and stuff and good to have the volume knob still here in a manual way. In the lower end you have here the shifting lever that saves space and also for the driving mode to so switch, for example sport mode. Then you have a USB charger here but also inductive charging pad in the front part. Cup holders are adaptive and last but not least, you have here this armrest and that can be open in a split way and with another USB charger. And close up here, infotainment system. Once again, these hotkeys are really kind of fancy and they're also, you know, yeah, they don't have a haptic feedback, but the acoustic one and climatization then is like this. And yeah, this is of course somewhat a problem while driving, not too easy to do that. So I would have preferred manual climate knobs at some point, like the manual volume knob. So that's my criticism point. The set nav actually, it's you know definitely a step forward. Um, you can see here how fast it is, um, but here the pinch and zoom could definitely be a little bit more responsive. But overall, a big step forward here, and the Apple CarPlay integration is also quite nice. And there's also the focal sound system here. And well, let's go with here and. We actually have a quite decent sound here. Um, we've heard better ones, but of course also definitely worse ones. Focal sound system, definitely if you are a music lover, should go for that. Easy to go back here and to go to the home menu, 
once again right here this is maybe not the best as for the overview but here you can have this more classic menu and in the hybrid you also have an energy meter right there with some interesting illuminations there you can see when you have the hybrid version also front wheel drive only so this is a pure front wheel drive platform so far at least <laughs> so um, it also powers then the front wheels and here you can also go to these e-save modes that you can save battery for later or even charge it while driving of course that's not so efficient now to the rear compartment and the question is also difference hatch the berlin as the french say and also with the estate how is it different first of all doors here a hard pack at the inside at the rear but that's in this segment also quite common and then here in the hatch the hmm, let's say smaller version the wheelbase actually is a little bit shorter here but the knee room here knee space is the same both for hatch and estate that's very interesting because the longer wheelbase for the estate goes only in the trunk so it does work here with one means 86 or 601 with two tall adults directly behind each other this seat is set to my driving position because they have you know this recess here back of the seat so it works with the knees but just when I hold them a little bit to the inside to the outside they hit it right there and headroom yeah exactly fits overall it's actually quite okay but yeah again with the knees when I hold them to the outside they hit it here have to put them here in the inside not the most comfortable position but the difference is definitely to the predecessor that you now have more leg room in the hatch version and you here have some cup holders non-adaptive though and two more usb-a supplies let's now get to the back of the estate and it has 5.5 centimeters or two inches more wheelbase than the hatch however that all went into the trunk Peugeot said and indeed the legroom is actually kind of identical here in the estate version and also in the hatch. I can just prove that. So you don't gain more rear comfort or something. It's nothing special here in the rear. Headroom is a little bit more than in the hatch, but that's about it. So the Peugeot 308, definitely a gain in legroom if you compare hatch with this predecessor hatch. But here for the estate, not much has changed. But material-wise and so on, and the whole quality impression, that's really good. And also the whole glass insulation all over the vehicle, that has been improved. I really wonder how much difference we can feel later when driving. And trunk comparison, starting here with the hatch. Interesting that it's hidden here. The button is hidden right there. And this is really exclusive to the hatch. So over 400 liters here, whereas the estate is at over 600 liters. And here the length is around 30 inches or 77 centimeters. Let's put the backpack inside, you can really see it right here. But overall, I mean, very good already for a compact hatch. And here, just some space underneath. Of course, then you can also fold the seats. Now the trunk of the estate, around 200 liters more if you compare it to the hatch, so more than 600 liters. And you might remember with the hatch, we were at around you know, 77 centimeters so look at that you know like between 30 and 31 inches and here this is what we have more in trunk so this part here this is what is more in the trunk now at 40 inches or just more than a meter and that of course makes you more flexible and then let's put the backpack inside here easily fits of course so really cool the plug-in hybrid version will a little bit loose here in liter space by the way so that's the only catch but it's actually totally fine then also good with the estate you can here fold the seats from here that's the easy solution and see here directly fold flat yeah that's really good and another reason to go for the estate if you need that flexibility engine time you will have a 1.2 liter three cylinder turbo petrol engine with 110 or 130 horsepower the one you can see here at the moment this is by the way here for charging the battery while being here in the studio all day then you have a 1.5 liter diesel also with 130 horsepower and last but not least a 1.6 liter turbo petrol engine made it to an electric motor and this plug-in hybrid will have 180 horsepower or in the gt 225 horsepower and if you have the plug-in hybrid by the way 12 kilowatt hour battery it's a known PF system here from the French corporation and they have around like 40 kilometers, 25 miles of electric range. We're starting our driving part here with a new Peugeot 308 station wagon. 
5.5 centimeters longer in wheelbase than the hatch. So most of the stuff we say will both count also for the hatch. So this is very interesting because to me it feels a little bit like the 508. So the, you know, more grown up model. AJ is joining me for the driving part here. So always great to have comments also as a passenger. And of course you just see more with four eyes definitely. So the first thing I noticed driving the new version here, the noise insulation is better now, although this still has some camo wrap, which is not the best, you know, for, for, the, for the noise and behavior and stuff. But definitely a little bit more silent in here, that's definitely a step ahead. So we'll soon drive the predecessor, which is in front of us, which is a good comparison, and also the Seat Leon FR 1.5 TSI. While driving, I think, by the way, the 3D instruments, they look cool, but I'm not sure, AJ, how do you, do you think about it? To me, it's just a fancy stuff, but I don't really need it while driving. It's kind of distracting to me, at least. Well, I think this is a different uh, type of 3D. It's a very simple prism projection type of 3D uh, rather than a stereoscopic 3D. So it's, I like it. I think it's, it's fun. Maybe I'm, I like the whole video game sci-fi <laughs> kind of vibe that it has. And I really like Peugeot with their design. They do things differently. I know German cars are, are more maybe conservative, and that's going to be the safer yeah, design. Jawohl, we are conservative. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's okay to do things just because it looks cool. I, I always appreciate things where they are done for the sake of looking cool. So I think I would lear learn to live with that. But how do, you, how do you feel about the visibility with the steering wheel? That's always been a Yeah, big that's still an, still an issue. Um, so I would have to, you know, have to have the steering wheel in this position for, you know, best maneuverability, but still, I mean, I have to, I mean, yeah. at least it reminds me like, oh, Thomas, put your spine up and don't like crouch down like this. Mm -hmm. So, um, but still, it's, it's a thing, then it's blocking, but you know, they do it in this position, this eye cockpit, because then they don't have to do a head-up display, that it's more like in your line of sight, but to me, as tall person, it's, it's kind of very close, definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's talk about that engine. Um, this 225 horsepower plug-in hybrid, so this is a system output. So the strongest one they have available. And um, of course, cool is we always have the charging. You can also see it here on, on the camera when I lift my foot off throttle, always in this charge area. A little bit delayed though, you know, how this um, digital arrow goes. So now on the brakes, even more recuperation. It, doesn't recuperate harshly. There's also the B mode I can put in, then it's stronger recuperation. Mm, yeah, but it's not set on the one pedal driving feeling or, or something like that. However, the acceleration is actually quite decent because you have power of both drivetrains. We also have these driving modes and then I can put it in the sport mode and then we also hear and feel the petrol engine is on now. Before that, there are so many situations where we drive just all electric. Mm -hmm. uh, and here now when for example, at 50 and I hit the throttle. But the engine doesn't sound 80. very yeah. sporty in the sport mode. And this is the GT pack. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't sound sporty at all. Um, also, you know, suspension is actually quite soft still. So when I do like some left, right, you see suspension does shake up. Yeah. So this is not the emphasis of this vehicle. It's more like the comfort. And I think rolling comfort and stuff is actually quite good. Yeah. So uh, we don't feel the bumps and stuff in, in, in our lumbar area or something. Here can once again go back to the hybrid mode. Yeah, I didn't really feel yeah. any change now either, you know, between the sport and hybrid. But let's also keep in mind that this is the prototype that yeah. we're driving and it's not the full production. Here in the hybrid mode uh, at the moment uh, we are driving all electric then. And you can hardly pick it up which mode you are really in unless you really do this floor down then you do hear the engine and the same also happens here in the hybrid mode when i then hit the throttle there we go i'm not sure if you could pick it up on camera then also the engine hops on and then you can feel but actually quite good transitions so uh, that's actually they managed very well it's also a known drivetrain it has been there in so many other models of peugeot uh, before so we know it and it's also like proven tech not the highest all electric range though so far it's always like maximum of 40 kilometers or 25 miles or something yeah but overall i think this will probably be the most interesting version to go for i guess now we switched cameras, <laughs> put it here to the panoramic roof to give you a better 
view to the front here in this dynamic driving part and starting in normal hybrid mode this already feels quite good the steering feeling of all is not that natural i think it's you know fun and has this arcade style feeling because it's so small but it doesn't give you the most natural experience what do you think shall we try sport mode again let's check it out there we go no more power from the petrol engine of course also more sound and yeah i think it's it's a lot of fun definitely and you get this computer game feeling but yeah i think it should be more natural in the feeling i mean you also drove, drove around what do you think about steering feel here aj i definitely understand what you're meaning with the steering feel but you know you're not going to get so much better steering feel from other cars in this uh, segment and I, I think because of course if you're getting the octavia rs or something that's a different story but for something quite standard i don't really mind the steering feel but the fact that it's so small, the wheel itself, and it's such a quick steering rack, uh, I think with the chassis and the steering, it's a really fun car to drive on twisty roads. Yeah, you get like a really unique feeling, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we, we talked about this. Um, I think we, we both agree that the chassis is really good. And that's actually, when you look on paper, also one of the main changes. So comparing to the predecessor, they now improved chassis stiffness by 25%. And I can really say, I really feel that. Do you feel any flexing of the chassis? No, and I, exactly. That stiffness definitely is playing such a big role because the chassis, the suspension might not be very sophisticated, but it has a nice flatness and there is no flex. I don't feel any flex. The turning in the sound, by the way, this has always been the case with, you know, with a lot of French cars here. With it's like, to me, it's always sound like you know this song like, da, 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 like. Da, da. <laughs> yeah, there's two there's two different notes there, so it's. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. A little quirky Frenchness. Yeah, I mean, why not? Definitely, you get more unique feeling. No doubt about that. Uh, brake feeling is also quite good, actually. So I uh, can't complain about that either. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's not the most expensive vehicle, but you already get something unique and fun. No doubt about that. So, of course, really interesting. This being the hybrid now has a little bit more weight, you know, due to the additional battery. But what about the smaller engine? Why don't you take this one for a spin, AJ? What we've done now is we came from the plug-in hybrid, 1.6 liter, four-cylinder petrol engine plus electric motor, all front-wheel drive, 225 horsepower. Now switched to a more say, basic version. This is the 1.2 liter three-cylinder petrol engine with 130 horsepower and also not the GT anymore, but the Allure. So we also have these fabric seats here instead of the you know, sport seats with microfiber. So, oh uh, yeah, and, and the bright ceiling. So, a lot of differences now. The question is, how does this one drive now? So, acceleration, not great, but the engine sounds a lot louder. Yeah, of course. This three-cylinder sound is actually quite interesting. Right? It's, you know, unique, right? I agree with you. A lot of people, you know, in the past, we also weren't the, the biggest fans of these uh, Turbo 3 with the thrum. But somehow, because of that little bit of gruffness, it sounds more exciting, in a way. When you when you don't have you know a great um, V8 or inline six or something, I think a, a nice thrummy three cylinder can actually be pretty fun to listen to. Yeah, I think you know the acceleration here for lower speeds and for like inner city countryside and so on. This was actually totally fine. We also have the automatic gearbox. This mm -hmm. you know. 308 can also be bought of course with the manual and low spec versions but here also with the automatic gearbox and I think the, the gears to me also as a passenger here was actually quite smooth in the transition you know mm -hmm. well, how, how do you feel? yeah I think it's pretty good let's go into sport mode now that we're on a little bit of a winding road and shifting down earlier you felt shifts that, yeah. down earlier I do have paddle shifters as well to take control but there is definitely a lot of top end mid range to top end power in this three cylinder engine so it's nice because you get the engine revving you hear the sound and that gives you that little bit more power anyway in the top end 
So I think it's a bit sporty that way. So I would say, I'm mean, not sure if you, you share my opinion, if you want to save some money, don't want to get the, you know, the plug-in hybrid because of the higher entry price, I think this engine will be absolutely fine, right, power-wise. Yeah, as long as you don't expect to be doing 170 on the German Autobahn and then put your foot down and feel that surge, then no. It's, it's going to lose wind around 130, and then beyond that, it's really struggling. It's out of breath. But, yeah, like I said, within the city and on country roads, it's, it's fairly plenty. So, oh, okay. AJ is turning it up now. Woo! <laughs> Well, think about the handling in, in, in the corner, you know. It's It feels light. It's the combination of the lighter steering wheel, I guess. It's also a pretty sharp rack. I mean, it's very agile. I think it's like the small steering wheel. Small steering it's, wheel. It's just so much fun. It's like this go-kart uh, feel. Exactly. Feel like too, right? Yeah, I actually, I was not expecting. I mean, the plug-in hybrid, electric power, instant torque, 225 horsepower, it's expected that it's a little bit sprightly, but here, yeah, so roll-on acceleration is not great. Yeah. Definitely at 110 kilometers per hour and you floor it, you get that three-cylinder thrum and roll-on is not that great, but at slower speeds, it's still pretty sprightly. It's got good pickup and go, but um, steering, I really like the steering. And yes, you don't have like that really sporty suspension. This is not the GT pack anyway, but um, so far so good. But let's talk about that steering wheel again. It's such an interesting quirky shape. It's a, you know, what does I call it? Squircle, because it's like a square and a circle yeah, it's together, it's squircle. Can you see like above it when you're a little bit shorter than I'm me. a little but bit the... disappointed, you're right. The 3D sounds, I mean, looks fun, sure. But even this, which is not 3D, I just cannot see the, the I, I can't see the speed. You need to put the steering wheel lower, so there's no other, I mean, you still have some space. I can, possible. I can move it Please lower. Don't do it at home, don't uh, <laughs> adjust the steering wheel while driving, it's not that good. This is only in professional hands. It's a prototype, you know. And yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with the steering wheel all the way low. It doesn't look too bad though, I mean. It's not it, that comfortable. I mean, you don't have to put your hands that high, so... Um, yeah, I can hold it like this, but then I've, I feel nah, like I'm driving a shopping cart. Always like at a 3 o'clock, um, 9 o'clock, right? Yeah, and now, it, now, now this feels a little bit too low for me. But this is the only way I can actually see the dash. How low can you go? How low can it go? Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's put the money where the mouth is, because we're sitting inside a Seat Leon FR ETSI, the 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine with a 150 horsepower. We have the DSG as well. I'm in sport mode. So, how does the 308 compare? Thomas, what is the first thing that we noticed and we immediately talked about when we switched over to the Seat? Yeah, we just passed the motorway and we are really astonished. The 308, the new one, is really more silent, especially at higher speeds. So clearly, mm -hmm. this one was noisier on the motorway. And Leon is not famous for being a noisy car or something. So um, really Peugeot stepped up the game, great noise installation. So the Leon is noisier in comparison here to the new 308. That's already one of the very big interesting findings. And let's keep in mind the 308 has a lot of camo. So the wraps, uh, it's a sticker basically on the entire uh, exterior of the car. There's folds, it's coming undone in places. It's not completely sealing all the creases. So there's a little bit of noise and humming because of that and still it was much quieter but another interesting thing and Thomas you and I were discussing this uh, while we were driving is the interior I personally find this interior a bit bland and that's not to say that this is a bad interior it's very functional but you know this is a Seat so there's hard plastic here and my knee is resting against that after a while it gets a bit painful and I know the 308 is also not such a big change but somehow it's a bit more playful. Definitely more playful. This is um, more conservative, but also clean in a way. Well, that's the power now of the fossil on the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, this engine is very good because it can be really fuel saving with this new mild hybrid technology. It's working very well in here. You can score some four, maybe five liters in one kilometer. So if you, of course, not right now here, uh, but in general, so very uh, good fuel saving engine. That's cool about that. 
So back to the interior, like from the interior styling, I like this one better because it's just, you have a better overview, it's cleaner, the instruments are better integrated, Definitely. clearer to read. And also nothing I found better here with Leon, not sure how you feel, the steering feel is more precise, you know, you, you have more natural connection, driver, road, and the car. Yeah, let's talk about that now, because we were both very impressed with the steering and the chassis of the new 308 as well. And this, as I've always said, uh, and I really like Seat Leon's because they're a little bit more of the, the sporting, younger, athletic cousin to the Golf, I would say. And true, it's still the same really capable machine. But again, it shows that, you know, you don't need DCC. Because I think the chassis in the 308 is as good as the Leon with have, the um, FR. Uh, I mean, we have the um, DCC here, this is the adaptive suspension. So Peugeot does not offer that. So we have the possibility here when we're in sport mode, not only gears turn up higher, you hear that now, when AJ forces it, but also we have way less body roll. That's yeah. the thing. I mean, like, we have to split, like, chassis-wise, like, the hardware is really excellent in the Peugeot, and it's also good here. But since we're more adaptive now here, the car just stays more upright, you know? Mm -hmm. So, especially here in the sport mode, I think that is where the Leon S actually has an advantage. Um, fun factor-wise, well, what, what would you say? For, for me, I like the 308 a little bit more, especially that smaller three-cylinder engine, because it's, it has that lighter, spirited feel. Sure, the engine can get droning, and we're driving in an enthusiastic manner. It doesn't mean, even I never drive like this all the time. So you want a more quieter engine, and this yeah, is very yeah, smooth. No, no, of course, he doesn't drive. <laughs> <laughs> but the steering is definitely slower. The FR with the progressive steering, it's great. But the smaller steering wheel and the fast rack in the 308 just makes it feel so much more on its toes. Yeah. You know, like a basketball player just ready to, to you know, sidestep at any time. This is sure-footed, but it takes, you see, I need to shuffle my hands to get more lock. Um, but definitely the visibility to the dials is better because you don't have such a tall dashboard in this. I have much vis better visibility out uh, front. So. For me, the biggest takeaway is how nice with just hardware, like we were saying, the good compression and rebound damping uh, in the new 3A with the new chassis and the sound insulation. Yeah, I mean, it's not only wind noise where the 3A is better. Also, especially that has been the common thing with the Leon and the Octave and the Golf. From the rear axle, you have these low frequency sounds when we're going over some bumps. You're like, oh, oh, oh. just like really subtle, like. Um, like a little of a bass sound or something, mm -hmm. and you feel that here way more than in the 308. So definitely what I take away from the 308 is more silent, both from the wind noise and also from tire rolling and suspension noise, I would call it that way. <clears throat> so that was, you know, really interesting, um, fun, I think both. So you prefer the steering of the 308. I prefer the steering feel of the Leon though, but the 38 is more unique in its you know, steering character. Chassis-wise, both good. Suspension-wise, I have to say, the 308 is good, but more in a comfortable way. I think here, of course, you have the optional DCC, which is still an option. And if you have that one, even less body roll, especially in the sport mode. So this, again, where the Leon needs it a little bit more. Um, yeah, the, the question is, I think, what are you using the car for? So, mm -hmm. I think we both say that the 308 offers more comfort. And here the Leon, if you go, especially with the DCC, offers a little bit more sporty driving, you know, characteristic. When you need that. Yeah, yeah, if you want to have that on the mount. So that's, I think, um, really interesting. And seating comfort wise, I was really surprised about that. The Allure seats in the 308 are somewhat close to these ones here. These are also the ones with microfiber in the Leon, also beautiful. But the new sports seats in the 308, to me, offer actually the best comfort here in this comparison. I mean, we didn't plan this one here to come out as a comparison review, but it's surely what it is. And I mean, super interesting impressions for both of us and surely also for you guys, right? So we now switch to the second generation 308, the new one, the third generation. So this one then here, the predecessor of the new model. Very interesting because 
at first, you know, we kind of thought, yeah, you know, it's more an evolution, not that much change. But when you really sit in the older model, the changes are really more crucial. So noise insulation wise, this one is way louder. How, how did you, did you feel that? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I think just again, just to show how the new 308 is so much quieter. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, steering is also, you know, really small and so on. This is not the biggest change, I would say. However, the new one, the new 308, more feels like a little smaller 508. And this also speaks for how more sophisticated this new model is. The instruments are also a little bit more present, better to read than in this one. The position, however, is somewhat the same. And of course, fancy infotainment system. And one of the main changes to me is the seating comfort in the new one is way better, especially with these sports microfiber seats. These have the best comfort. Um, here, especially like the position with the foot and so on, I feel um, somewhat cramped. Yeah, and of course, big topic was the chassis flexing. So it's not that you would feel that the car is really much flexing here or so, but you somehow feel that the new one more follows your, your commands. So how do you perceive it? Huh? Yeah, I think the new one is definitely more responsive. And this, there's a little bit of sluggishness, there's a little bit of vagueness and disconnect because of the steering geometry, the chassis, the stiffness, and all of these different elements. And yeah, talking about the interior, you said it's not so much of an evolution, but it's a bigger step. But I think the interior is more evolutionary because you have a bigger touchscreen, you have that 3D for the, for the, for the dash, the cockpit, but the, the kind of vibe is the same, I would say. Yes, yes, that too. So the, yeah. like the, like the basic layout, yeah. definitely. Also like with this Peugeot i cockpit, how they call it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really like next, next phase, next level. But the, the whole impression you get from driving the car, definitely, that really feels like a step like, um, you know, like you would go into another segment or something, you know, because the new one is just so much more sophisticated somewhat. Yeah. This is also what we see in other manufacturers, like when we first drove the, the new Polo, you know, on the MKB A0, A1 platform, or sorry, the MKB A0 platform, yeah, that was, um, it felt so much more sophisticated, so much more grown up. Of course, it had become a lot bigger. And with the new facelift of the Polo, it really does, it's getting closer to being like a Golf. And like you said, this new 308 is getting very close to being like a 508. Yeah, which would be mid-size segment. It's more like when a Golf becomes a Passat or something like yeah. that. So, uh, But yeah. the new 308 is not any bigger than the no, station no, no, no. wagon is about the, it's the same size, the same wheelbase exactly. as this, because they said also that they didn't really receive any criticism on the size of the 308, so they wanted to keep it very, very much the same size. Yeah. So this was really interesting. Also tune in to more competitor episodes. Of course, we have a video of the Golf Alltrack. That's the Golf Estate in a special version. You should check out this video and also full reviews of the Seat Leon or maybe also our playlist of Peugeot vehicles in general, where you can also see reviews of the 508, because yeah, some people might think between 308 and 508, this is also a very interesting comparison.